I like it, cut G. Shotgun! You are dead! Not a big surprise! This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Rocket Launcher! One! On top of the tent. Yeah, okay. No, I know what I meant. They're inside the Dude, tent. Look at his face. That scared me because I just heard something land on top of the tent and I was so confused. Poor guy. His hand is just phasing through. <laughs> guy's right there. See him? Ready? Dead. <laughs> oh, what? Controller player! That is a controller player! He's under me!
Hey, so I'm finally back. I, I've been putting off this video for way too long. And I feel like I should have given you guys as much content as I possibly could. So here we are. A lot of people ask me for a thumbnail tutorial. So I'm gonna give you guys something close to what I do. First thing you want to do is download paint.net. It's a free application. I will leave a link in the description down below. First, I'm going to go over the tools. Click up here to open all the windows. Your tool window, your history window, your layer window, and your color window. First tool that I'm going to go over is the rectangle select. If you click and drag, it selects an area. Pretty straightforward. The next tool is a move pixels tool. So if you click anywhere and drag, it will move all the pixels in your selection. Right now we don't have a selection, so it's going to move all the pixels. But for example, if we use a rectangle select and then use that tool, it will move only the selection. Next we have a lasso select. Click and drag and it will make any shape you want. I really don't recommend using this tool, it's just pointless. You need a selection for this. Use a rectangle select or a lasso select, then click on the tool and you can move around your selection. Next up, the circle select. Anything that you want to select in a circle. You can hold shift to make it a even circle. Next tool is the magnifier. Click and drag to select an area and it will zoom your screen to it. Then hit control and scroll in order to scroll in and out. Next tool is the magic select tool. For example, you have a line of black on your screen and you want to only select that line of black. You can click with it and it'll only select that color. You can use this tolerance meter to adjust how close to the color that you want to select. For example, if I have a gray right next to it and I want to select both, if I use a tolerance of 38, it won't select it, but if I scroll up to a tolerance of around 70, you can see that it's also selected. Next tool is the move tool, straightforward, you just click and drag and it'll move your window. Paint bucket tool, again, self-explanatory. Next up is the gradient tool, and this is where the colors come in. Click more to pull up a detailed window, you can drag your cursor around here in order to change your color. If you want to change colors, you can either press X, or you can click on this little arrow. For, uh, for the gradient tool, you need both colors selected. For example, I want a gradient between a dark red and a lighter red. I use the gradient tool, I click and drag, and it gives me a nice gradient. Now there are different modes for this. There's the linear reflected mode, which gives you a line. There's the diamond mode, which gives you a diamond in the middle. Circular mode, which gives you a circle. There's the radial one, sorry, conical one, which I don't see what you would use it for. Spiral clockwise and spiral counterclockwise. Again, I see no use for these. Next up is the brush tool. This is the most universal tool you will probably use. Click B to access it. Don't forget to go down to this menu and enable anti-aliasing because it'll give you a smooth line. If you don't enable it, it'll give you a jagged line with a lot of pixels. In order to change the color, just go down to this color wheel and select primary and change the color to whatever you want. Next tool, eraser tool, again, self-explanatory. Pencil tool, again, self-explanatory, just draws a pixel every single time so you can't change its value. The eyedropper tool will select uh, your color and put it in your color wheel. For example, I want to select this white, click, and now it's selected as my color. Stamp tool, I don't know what you use it for, I don't use it. Again, the, whatever this thing is called, the recolor tool, I don't use it, I don't know what, the, what it's used for. Text tool, change your text font up here. Change your text size here, and change the text color here. Type anything you want, click finish. The line tool, remember turn on anti-aliasing. Click and drag, 
You can drag the line out, hold shift in order to snap it in 15 degree increments. Then when you let go, you'll get these little grab points. Grab the point to move your line. If you want a smoother line, go up here to, uh, to however you pronounce this, and it'll give you a smoother line that goes across your points. And then finally, the shape tool. Drag it out. You have all of the different shapes here. You can draw it filled. You can draw it filled with an outline. And I'll use your secondary color for the fill. It's pretty simple. So those are the basic tools. Now to how I make my thumbnails. Click Control N on your keyboard and input 1280 by 720. This is a pretty good dimension for a high res but not too big of a file. Then go into the internet and search up whatever background you want. I'll just use the one that I usually use. When looking at the photo, make sure it has as high of a resolution as possible. Because you really don't want to be stretching your image a lot. I'm just going to use this one. Copy the image, go back, make sure you don't have any other layers, press paste it should show up. Then, what I do is I put a small blur. Click Effects, Blurs, and I put a Gaussian blur on it, and put the radius up to something like 15. Now you want the main part of your thumbnail, which tells the viewer what you are going to be showing them. Click the plus down here in the layer menu, and it will give you another layer. Go on the internet, again, and find an icon that reflects what you're showing. For example, I'm going to be making YouTube thumbnails, so I could search up YouTube logo transparency. And take the logo, make sure that once it loads, it has the little, little checkerboard pattern. This one does not, this one does. So click copy image, go back, and paste. Now it should pop up here. Also make sure it's on bilinear, so it's smoother. What I like to do is give it a little bit of a drop shadow. So I go over to photo, glow, turn the radius all the way up, brightness all the way down, contrast all the way up. And click repeat glow a few times to give it a drop shadow. Then I click plus again, go to my text, select the font that I want. I use the font Kamaka Axis. Select a reasonable font size and type in, for example, thumbnails. Then change the color to white because I want it to be visible. Now that you're finished typing your text, click finish and go to photo, glow, radius all the way up. In this case, contrast all the way down. And it should give you a nice drop shadow. Now. What I like to do is I like to give my text a gradient. Click on the magic wand tool. Click on the letter you want to select. Make sure it's selecting basically all of it, but not the drop shadow. And hold shift. And it should select only the text. If it selects anything more like this, you can always mess around with the tolerance. Then I like to give it a nice gold gradient. So I get a gold color and then a slightly, slightly lighter gold. There we go. Now I use the gradient tool, drag it down and position it so it's about half and half. And there you go. You have your nice looking text. Now click plus again. Go into the interwebs. Search up anime lines. Find one that's not too blurry. And has a pretty high resolution. I just used the first one. Copy image. Go over, make sure you have a new layer selected. Paste. Now, go over down to this little wrench tool, make sure you have the layer selected, 
Go to the blend mode and click Additive, and it should add the anime lines right on top of it. Drag down the opacity a little bit, then click Effects, Blurs, and Gaussian Blur. To give it a little bit of a blur. Not too much though. And there you have it, a pretty nice looking YouTube thumbnail. I hope that clarified any questions for you guys, and I'm really sorry for not posting. I've just been procrastinating a lot, and school has been slowing me down. Hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope this really helps you. I know a lot of people who are struggling with thumbnail creation, and please do not directly copy what I'm doing. Be original. Make your own text color, get your own backgrounds. Be who you are, don't be me. Thank you again for 100 and now 200 subscribers. It, I don't know how I got here, but thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it's not in a month. Goodbye.